Hey, my name is Josh Smith. I'm the president of Montana Knife Company, and today I'm going to show you how to sharpen your chef's knives. So let's start off by talking about what you need to actually sharpen a chef's knife. A lot of people have a honing rod, and that's fine. We'll get into talking about that in a minute. And then we have, and we sell on our website, these WorkSharp whetstones. Uh, that are kind of more specifically made for chef's knives in the kitchen. And then we also have these custom leather strops on our website. And so between the strop, the sharpening stone, and the honing rod, that should be all that you need. So when it comes to a sharpening stone, you need to know what kind of a stone you have. Is it an oil stone or a water stone? It is really important that whichever one it is, you actually use that oil or that water because it helps preserve the life of the stone, it helps it cut better, and it's just something that's really important to get a good result on the sharpening. So, this is a water stone. I'm actually gonna take this bottle of water here, I'm gonna pour this into this little bath here, and this water, the stone is actually gonna sit in that water, soaking that water up into the stone as I work on it. The other thing I did before we shot this video is I actually just went and soaked this in a bucket of water and just allowed that thing to be completely submerged in water and really fill up that porous stone. It's a lot like a sponge. So while we're talking here, I'm actually gonna pour some water in here so that stone can kind of continue to soak up water. I'm gonna just pour it right on the face and just kind of let it run right off the edge and fill up this little bathtub that we've got here for this stone. Okay, now our stone has water on it. Uh, I've also got a rag here that I use to kind of wipe that stone off so it's nice and clean because I don't want any leftover grit from maybe the last time I used it or just dust from this thing sitting around in my shop having not been used recently. The other thing we need to talk about is the angle of the blade of which you sharpen. Generally, a slighter angle like 15 degrees, 17 degrees is what's used on a chef's knife. When you get into a harder working chopping type knife, a hunting knife, you're going from that 17 up to 20, 22 degrees, stuff like that. The other really cool the thing that these stones have to help you with the angle is they actually have a built-in angle that's, that's designated and stamped right on this little piece here and you can flip this from 15 to 17. So we're starting out actually on the 15 degree side and the beautiful thing is is you can actually lay your blade on that 15 and get a sense for what 15 degrees actually looks like and feels like on your stone. Now you can leave those on the stone as you sharpen or if you find that they're in your way now that you've kind of got your angles associated here, you can actually pull those off and set them aside so you're kind of completely free to move with your blade. Now, before we start, I actually wanna cover the honing rod. This is a chef's knife that I just pulled out of my wife's kitchen it's dull, it's definitely not sharp. I'm running my fingers on this edge back and forth. It is not cutting me at all. It is absolutely for sure dull. So the honing rod, a lot of people have a misconception about what it really does. It doesn't really resharpen your blade. It'll kind of realign the burrs on the edge. Uh, it'll clean a little bit of stuff out of the, uh, microscopically out of the edge. Uh, a lot of times the burr on that edge will actually roll over to one side or the other. So this just helps realign the burrs on your edge. Quite frankly, I think most people do more damage with the honing rod than good because they're very inconsistent with their angles and they're rolling that edge back and forth, uh, really frankly just putting more wear and tear on, on the edge of the knife. So with a honing rod, you gotta be careful. It's actually got these big, uh, this big guard area here so you don't come down and slice into your fingers or your hand. Um, you can go backwards on it. A lot of people, you know, go forward like this, like they're cutting into it. Some people are going like so, and then they're going backwards here or, or this direction. It really doesn't matter, but it's really about your angle on your edge staying consistent as you can. Uh, and you see a lot of people doing this, and they're just beating up their edge. There's no consistency. They're really not doing anything. If you go slow on here and try and pay attention to your angles, you can, you can actually do a little bit of good. And this is really just to help you get by through using that blade before you actually go to your sharpening stone. So a few passes on there, and then we'll feel it. It helps a tiny, tiny bit, but it really doesn't resharpen it. 
I can still run my fingers on here. It feels like it's a little sharper back in here, not so much here, but this knife needs some real work done on the actual stone. Okay, so when we sharpen with our stone, I actually run my edge backwards, meaning I start at the tip and I run back to the back of the knife. I actually don't cut into the stone like this. I go away from the edge, and the reason why is we want to establish a burr on this edge. Now, the other thing I should talk about before we get started is this stone is a dual grit stone, meaning it's a combination stone. It has a thousand grit side on this side and 6,000 grit on the back side of it. That 6,000 grit is gonna be at the end to kind of refine that edge, align that burr, uh, but we need to do some actual real work. So we're just gonna start on the 1,000 grit side because we need to cut some steel away. So we're gonna start with the tip here and then we're gonna move across that stone this way. And again, I can establish my angle and then I can just bring it over here and keep that angle while I sharpen. Now I'm gonna just make a bunch of passes on one side of this knife and I wanna actually create a burr on this other side here. So I'm here and I'm just pushing. I'm using the full length of that stone. And again, if I want, I can check my angle, which is about what I've got. So now I can stop and let's check for a burr. So if I was sharpening this back side going this way, then I wanna feel for that burr on the other side because I'm rolling that burr around that edge. So I'm gonna feel with my fingers. And I've got a little bit of a burr going in places, but not the whole length. So I'm gonna go back. And I'm actually using a lot of pressure. I'm pushing hard. Okay, so as I feel for a burr, I'm just running my fingers down the edge from the top of the blade to the, to the, to the edge, and I'm just feeling to see if I got a little burr that's catching. And I feel on this side, I'm not gonna have anything because that's the side that was running on the stone. So now that I've got that, I'm gonna reestablish my angle for this next side. And then I'm gonna kind of adjust my body a little bit. I can adjust the stone. And I'm gonna go to the other side. I'm gonna do the same thing. Okay, I've made a bunch of passes. And again, I'm feeling for a burr, and now I have a really nice burr going the whole length of that edge. So now we've established a burr on this knife, and now we're gonna start working that back and forth at first with, with a fair amount of pressure, and then we're gonna start to lighten that pressure as we go along. Switching sides. Again, we can check our angle if we're concerned about it. Now I'm gonna start lightening my pressure. Okay, so now I'm gonna feel this edge and I'm gonna kind of feel for any burrs and I'm gonna have a little bit of a burr on one side or the other just cause that's where I stopped. So now we're, this is the time we're gonna flip our stone over and we're actually gonna hone and finish that on that, that really fine grit side of the stone. So we're just gonna take this stone out, we're just gonna flip it over, put it back in there, and then I like, again, to wipe off any grit that might be on that stone, and I'll pour a tiny bit of water on the surface. So again, we're just gonna go back and forth here lightly with some nice, nice light passes. We'll establish our angle again. This is a very fine grit side of the stone. All 
Okay, so now the last step here is we want to do a little bit of stropping. So I'm going to just push this stone aside just a little bit. I'm going to lay out this leather strop with this nice fine side kind of just facing up. And now we're just, I'm going to actually lay it right along the edge of the table so my knuckles aren't hitting the table. And again, just like I did on that stone, I'm going to ride down that strop on both sides as if I'm trying to sharpen it with the stone. Two or three passes on either side is just fine. And you'll actually see some scratches maybe on one side that you don't see on the other. I can see those here. That's from sharpening on that stone. Okay. So now that knife feels much sharper and we can actually try and shave with this. As you remember, this blade had a really poor edge when I started. I was running my fingers along it and now it feels like it's gonna shave. It's absolutely ripping hair off. It's sharp as hell, and that is how you sharpen a chef's knife.